Welcome to Cardiac CT, Training Associates, Systematic Review of Cardiac CTA, representing complete analysis from image processing to reporting. This video was produced by Drs. John A. Rumberger and David A. Fine. This is Module 2, dealing with systematic review of cardiac function and systematic review of coronary artery anatomy. When viewing the individual cardiac axes, it's important to appreciate that they should be displayed in mutually orthogonal views. Shown here in this schematic is a short axis, and from the anterior posterior plane, this can be divided into a vertical long axis. From the same short axis, using a lateral cut, one can then demonstrate the images in a horizontal long axis view. Shown here are general representations using the American Heart Association 17 segment model of the left ventricular function demonstrating the horizontal long axis, vertical long axis, and a variety of basal, mid cavity, and apical short axis views. Quantitative left ventricular function can be performed manually or semi-automatically on virtually all available extra reconstruction workstations. The first step involves defining and presenting the images in the horizontal long axis, vertical long axis, and short axis, and then separating out by defining the plane of the mitral valve. Step two involves segmentation of the endocardium, which is demonstrated here. This can be done using semi-automatic edge detection tools or done manually. Step three involves segmentation of the epicardial surfaces, as demonstrated here. Once the epicardial surfaces are demonstrated, then one has the ability to look at quantitative information about the entire left ventricle. And in step four, you can have quantitative results, which are demonstrated here, including in the lower right-hand panel, a schematic illustration of cardiac function in a volumetric type display. Images can be performed in a variety of axes, but they must be done with end systole and end diastole. From that, one can get a variety of quantitative information as suggested, including time volume graph from which one can derive ejection fraction, stroke volume, end diastolic volume, and end systolic volume. And these can all be quantified, including cardiac output. Shown here in our example patient AR, is the horizontal long axis view demonstrating the septum, apex, and lateral wall motion, which appears to be normal. Next is shown the presentation in the vertical long axis demonstrating the anterior wall, apical wall, and inferior wall, which again demonstrates normal cardiac motion. Finally, one can present the data in the midventricular short axis demonstrating the entire circumferential aspect of the left ventricle, again demonstrating normal motion in the anterior wall, lateral wall, inferior wall, and interventricular septum. From such analysis, quantitative data on this individual's left ventricular end diastolic volume, end systolic volume, stroke volume, and ejection fraction can be obtained. These values are all within the normal range. For analysis of the coronary arteries, the current recommendations are to use the Society of Cardiovascular CT 18-segment coronary model, which is demonstrated here, representing the left main, proximal, mid, and distal left anterior descending with first and second diagonals, evaluation of the left circumflex, including the possibility of a ramus intermedius, as well as the possibility of uh, left-sided uh, predominance including a left posterior 
lateral branch and a possibility of a left posterior descending branch. Also, the right ventricle uh, and the right coronary artery are divided into proximal, mid, and distal segments, including a right-sided posterior descending and a possible right-sided posterior lateral branch. When one looks at uh, cardiac function, it's important that uh, when we want to look now at the coronary arteries, we need to examine the ballista cardiogram, which is demonstrated here. It would be uh, difficult to evaluate coronary anatomy by uh, deciding to look at images near systole. However, in the late diastolic or diastasis phase, you can see that the ballista cardiogram and the acceleration of the ventricle and the acceleration of the coronary arteries is minimal. These are ideal for review of coronary artery anatomy. Shown here are representative examples beginning systematically with evaluation of the left main, showing it in uh, the transaxial or foot view on the left and an anterior view on the right. You can see that the left main is normal. One can evaluate then the left anterior descending using a variety of tools. This is a volume rendering demonstrating the length of the left anterior descending and a portion of the first diagonal branch. Shown here in a maximum intensity projection, we see a demonstration of the left anterior descending proximal and mid segments demonstrating eccentric coronary artery calcification in the LAD and in the first diagonal. Uh, these are eccentric and non-obstructive in nature. One can also examine the LAD in a more longitudinal view, demonstrating again a 5 millimeter maximum intensity projection in the distal left anterior descending, demonstrating mild eccentric non-obstructive coronary disease. Here's the left anterior descending, showing the distal and apical segments as demonstrated by a 5 millimeter maximum intensity projection. This is also a better view of the first diagonal branch, uh, demonstrating uh, eccentric complex, that is, mixed plaque, demonstrating both uh, non-calcified and calcified plaque components, but this is, again, non-obstructive. One can also use a curved multiplanar reformation of the left anterior descending, again, demonstrating similar features, demonstrating the eccentric calcified plaque, which is non-obstructive. One can also view uh, the CPR of the LAD in a more traditional view, again demonstrating the same characteristics. The left circumflex on obtuse marginal can be displayed here in a 5 millimeter maximum intensity projection. One can see that the left circumflex appears to be normal and is non-dominant. The right coronary can be again displayed in a variety of views. This on the left and on the right are volume rendering views of the proximal portion of the right coronary and then the distal segments demonstrating also a right-sided posterior lateral and a right-sided posterior descending artery indicating right-sided dominance of the vessels. Shown here is a maximum intensity view also of the entire right coronary artery on the left, and then the distal portions demonstrating some mild, non-obstructive, eccentric calcified plaque in two portions of the posterior lateral branch. A curved multiplanar reformation can also be employed, demonstrating uh, both an axial on the left and a, a more curved traditional presentation on the right.